We're given vector a and b, and we're asked to find the cross product of the difference of vector a and b and the sum of vector a and b. And we'll do this problem two ways. The first way, we'll go ahead and find the resultant vector of vector a minus b, then the resultant vector of vector a plus vector b, and then find the cross product. And for the second method, we'll apply our properties of cross products listed below. But for the first method, again, we'll find vector a minus vector b, and then we'll find vector a plus vector b, and then we'll find the cross product of those two resultant vectors. So to find the difference of vector a and b, we'll subtract the corresponding components. So the x component would be four minus five, the y component would be seven minus four, and the z component would be two minus two. So again, the x component would be four minus five, the y component would be seven minus four, and the z component would be two minus two. So here is vector a minus vector b, and then we'll cross this with vector a plus vector b. So now we'll find the sum of the corresponding components. So the x component would be four plus five, the y component would be seven plus four, and the z component would be two plus two. So the resultant vector of vector a minus vector b would have an x component of negative one, a y component of three, and a z component of zero. And we'll cross this with the resultant vector of vector a plus vector b, which would have an x component of nine, a y component of 11, and a z component of four. And now to find this cross product, We'll set this up as a three by three determinant, where if we want to find the cross product of vector v and w, the first row of the three by three determinant would be the unit vectors i, j, and k. The second row would be the components of vector v. The third row would be the components of vector w. So in our case, again, we'll have a three by three determinant, where the first row will be the unit vectors i, j, and k. The second row will be the components of vector a minus vector b, so we have negative one, three, and zero. The third row will be the components of the vector a plus vector b, which are nine, eleven, and four. So we'll have a two by two determinant times a unit vector i minus a two by two determinant times vector j, and then plus a two by two determinant times vector k. So to find the elements in this first two by two determinant, we eliminate the row and column of the unit vector i, so we eliminate row one and column one, which leaves us the elements three, zero, eleven, four. And then for the second two by two determinant, we eliminate the row and column of vector j, so we eliminate row one again, but now column two. So we have negative one, zero, nine, four, and then finally for the third two by two determinant, we eliminate the row and column of vector k, so we eliminate row one again, but now we eliminate column three. So the elements will be negative one, three, nine, eleven. And now we'll evaluate the two by two determinants and multiply by the unit vectors. So here we have three times four, that's twelve, minus zero times eleven, which is twelve minus zero, so we have twelve i. Next we have minus negative one times four, that's negative four, minus zero times nine, so we have minus negative four times j, or just plus four j. And then finally, here we have negative one times eleven, that's negative eleven, minus three times nine, plus negative eleven minus twenty-seven, which is negative thirty-eight, so we have minus thirty-eight k. We're in component form, we have an x component of twelve, a y component of four, and a z component of negative thirty-eight. Now let's do this problem again using properties of cross products. Let's begin by focusing on this property here, where we have vector u cross with 
the sum of vector v and w. Notice how this is equal to vector u cross with vector v plus vector u cross with vector w. This is very similar to the distributive property in algebra. But it doesn't match our problem exactly, but notice how vector a minus vector b is just some resultant vector. Let's go ahead and call this vector u. So if we call this vector u, we can apply this property directly. This would be equal to vector u cross with vector a plus vector u cross with vector b. And now let's go ahead and make the substitution vector a minus vector b for vector u. So this would give us vector a minus vector b cross with vector a plus vector a minus vector b cross with vector b. And now we'll apply this property again. This is equal to vector a cross with vector a minus vector b cross with vector a plus vector a cross with vector b minus vector b cross with vector b. But now looking at this property, when we cross a vector with itself, we get the zero vector. So this would give us a zero vector and so would this. And now looking at this cross product here, notice how if we change the order, it'll give us this negative sign here. And since it's already negative, if we change the order, it would become positive vector a cross with vector b and then we have plus another vector a cross with vector b, which is equal to two times vector a cross with vector b. So we could find this cross product by first finding vector a cross with vector b and then multiplying by two. And the result would be the same as we found on the previous slide. And to save some time, I've already found vector a cross with vector b. You may want to verify this, but it comes out to the vector with an x component of six, a y component of two, and a z component of negative 19. And therefore, two times this cross product, it gives us the same result with an x component of 12, a y component of four, and a z component of negative 38. Again, this result is the same result that we found using our first method here. I hope you found this helpful.